I've done a few videos on comparative mythology and the links between East and West. And this time it's the connection between Rudra of the Hindus and Odin of the Norse and where they meet on the left hand path. First, Rudra. Anyone who performs a function of destruction participates in the Rudra principle. Life, which can only exist by destroying life, is a manifestation of Rudra. What is the meaning of this quote? Does it mean to kill your neighbor or partake in human sacrifice? Rudra is a terrible god, a god of violence and destruction. Does this mean brutal force is the eternal answer to the evolution of humankind, to the growth of human intellect? To understand who Rudra is, one must first understand Shiva. Shiva is more than just a god sometimes viewed from a left-hand path perspective. He is also darkness, that which is not manifested. He is not of substance. Substance stops light. He is what most of reality is, that space between the stars. Light is not eternal. All things that generate life will sometime in the future burn out, be it a candle, a bulb, or even a star. Darkness, though, darkness is eternal. Darkness is greater than light, for it was already there before light arrived. In Shiva is the divine darkness. Shiva is the black sun behind the sun. He is one with the deity Carl Jung identified as Abraxas, the eternal sucking gorge of the void. So, who's Rudra? Rudra is to roar out of that darkness. According to the Vedas, Rudra, an avatar of Shiva, is the spirit of nature associated with storms, war, and the wild hunt. He is one that the other gods are frightened of, of his violent ways and his desire for destruction. Thus, every single being, divine or mortal, fears Rudra. Besides Rudra's temperament being a representation of nature's most ruthless forces, such as lightning, wind, and wildfires, he is also the equivalent to Nietzsche's will to power. And in his anthropomorphic form, Rudra is lord of the animals, thus making him one with Pashupati, the horn god. His affinity for animals is a reflection of Rudra's station outside of society. In the Vedas, you'll find Rudra separated from the other gods in certain rituals, and instead you'll find him with the malevolent spirits and deities. He is Lord of Ghosts, known to lurk about graveyards. And in a more furious guise, he gives sinners the tortures of hell. Rudra's death, the demon, the cause of the tears, the god that kills. Now, even though Rudra seems to stem from a pre-Indo-European tradition, the comparison between he and the Norse god Odin cannot be denied. For like Rudra, Odin is a fierce, destructive god associated with storms, war, and the wild hunt. And going deeper, Odin's Germanic equivalent is the god Wotan. It is said that the name Wotan comes from the old Germanic word Vuth, meaning rage or wrath. But another meaning is to penetrate or force one's way through all opposition. Therefore, Wotan or Odin can be translated as the all-penetrating, the all-conquering spirit of nature. 
Now, the most ancient traces of Odin suggest that he came from outside Northern Europe and was a god that led the souls of the dead into the afterlife. But as his fame and influence spread northward amongst the Germanic peoples, he became associated with war and heroic deeds. And like Rudra, Odin has had problems with the other gods. Even though he is the Allfather, some Norse traditions allude to tales in which the gods kept Odin out of their realm for years so that they may not be tarnished by his dangerous ways. So, what do these two, Rudra and Odin, mean to us on the left-hand path where we, where we already have such deities such as Satan and Lucifer? Truth is, from a mythological perspective, Satan and Lucifer aren't really deities. A deity is a god, and they're not gods, they're the ex-employees of Yahweh. But don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean I don't hold these two in high esteem, because I do, for Western left-hand path traditions would not be what they are without them. It's just that Rudra and Odin are gods. Gods that when viewed from a left-hand path perspective are not ones you worship, but instead identify with, with what they represent, that roar out of the darkness, that roar coming from the God in you, calling you to that great self-overcoming. <laughs>